I found this article called The Truth Behind Privilege at feministculture.com. It was written by Sergio, a 16-year-old male feminist from Chicago. Now, whenever I'm faced with something published by somebody this young, part of me does think, but they're so young-bearing. Should you take it easy on them? Inevitably, a louder and more sensible part of me answers, if they're old enough to publish this crap, then they're old enough to be told it's crap. Bad ideas should be criticised, not necessarily for the purpose of changing the publisher's mind, but to provide the next person yet to form their own opinion with a counterweight and to encourage critical and independent thought. Anyway, this ridiculously stupid article begins... Male privilege is one of the more widely acknowledged forms of privilege which favours cisgendered men over all other genders. This privilege is based on the idea that men are stronger and smarter than women, meaning men should be favoured over women, thus giving men power. Male privilege manifests itself in many ways, but the most significant one is patriarchy, a system of power that puts men as the head of the unit. What a load of fucking shit. Like, who coordinates this patriarchy? Men? And how's that an issue? I mean, we're constantly told that women can do anything that men can do, so fucking do it. Stop fucking whinging and take over this elusive patriarchy. Jeez, it's almost like the feminist strategy for combating patriarchy is to whinge and complain to men and hope that men fix it. The success of women and other genders has been made difficult to achieve due to the existence of an entire system that favours one gender over others in many different ways. The wage gap is another obvious system that favours men over women, but it also factors in race, ability and other aspects of identity. The wage gap has been debunked more times than I can remember. The fact that you haven't acknowledged the logical reasoning behind your wage gap, the fact that morons like you keep squealing about something that has been rationally explained means one of two things. You're either completely fucking stupid and don't have the brain power to process it, or you're a dishonest cunt who does understand it but keeps screaming injustice nonetheless. Neither is very flattering. The concept of virginity has been and still is being forced on women to save themselves for men, but women should have the choice of when to have sex for the first time. The same concept of virginity is rarely applied to men. The concept of virginity may be forced upon women in some third world countries, but seeing as you regressive feminists and SJWs are doing fuck all to improve that situation, you don't get to claim it as your issue. In modern Western countries, the concept of virginity is not forced on men or women, so this is a non-argument. Cisgender privilege is the favouring of cis people, those who identify with the gender they were assigned at birth, over non-binary and trans people. The normalisation of being cisgender has led to a harsh view of trans and non-binary people, since their genders don't fit what society considers normal. For fuck's sake, nobody is assigned a gender at birth. This is one of the dumbest fucking lines I've heard, and I seem to be hearing it more and more. When a doctor says, it's a boy, or it's a girl, what they are actually saying is, this baby has a penis, or this baby has a vagina. Nothing more, nothing less. You silly bastards seem to be suggesting that they're actually saying, I decree that this baby will grow up to be competitive, assertive, aggressive, and toxic in nature. Or, I decree that this baby will grow up to be submissive, compassionate, and perpetually victimized in nature. They're not. It's penis or vagina. Simple as that. Cis privilege is knowing that you'll be able to safely use gendered spaces such as bathrooms, locker rooms and in-store dressing rooms, whereas trans and non-binary people are often forced to use the bathroom that corresponds with their genitals, putting them at greater risk of being assaulted or harassed by cis people in the bathroom for their gender identities. Nobody knows they'll be safe doing anything. That includes using bathrooms, locker rooms and in-store dressing rooms. You fucking retard. Employers tend to overlook disabled people because disability may interfere with the person's ability to do the job, or able-bodied people are just believed to do the job better simply for being able-bodied. Are you serious? An able-bodied person can stack supermarket shelves better than a person with no arms. An able-bodied person would make a better fitness instructor than a quadriplegic. And an able-bodied person does make a better firefighter than a blind person. Is this what we've come to? Are we going to let society fall down around us for the sake of this absolutely moronic PC culture? Think about what you're saying, mate. Fuck. Another systemic form of privilege is white privilege, which favours white people over all other races. White privilege is enforced through Eurocentrism and racism, so that people of colour aren't seen as superior or even equal to white people. What you're really saying here is that you don't see people of colour as equal to white people. See, you can't speak for society at large, and that's not just because you're 16 years old and know fuck all about the world. See, nobody can really speak for society at large, except for maybe those people we elect to do just that. It's funny how most people from your backwards SJW cult crap on about this white privilege shit, but nobody can give any real examples of it. It really just shows how racist most of you are. 
It is really important to not feel resentful for having privileges pointed out. Rather, you should acknowledge them and use them to empower and amplify the voices of disadvantaged groups. Okay, that seems like pretty sound advice. So let me point out a couple of privileges that you have. Now, it's important that you don't feel resentful about this. Rather, you should acknowledge them and use them to empower and amplify the voices of disadvantaged groups. You have the ability to publish articles like this one, which are consumed by impressionable young minds. Maybe if you encouraged independent critical thinking instead of pushing tired feminist propaganda, you could better empower and amplify the voices of these impressionable young minds. And you have the privilege of youth. You're clearly a passionate and energetic young man. The downside of youth is having very little life experience, so perhaps if instead of writing these types of virtue signalling articles from a position of ignorance, you sometimes focus that energy on listening to people who do have valuable life experience and real wisdom to share. You know, maybe that way you could use your privilege to empower and amplify the voices of those people. Good luck, Sergio.